Hi, I'm Kamali, and you're watching Newsfeed. Here are some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world. We'll tell you why some people in America are wearing Hawaiian shirts as a sign they want to bring about another civil war. Facebook staff stage a digital walkout over Trump's postings. Fashion design in the age of coronavirus. And you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. And top of our news feed, the Boogaloo Boys. Never heard of them? Well, you're not alone, but they are making use of Facebook and online gaming sites to spread an ideology which calls for another civil war in the United States. And they're wearing Hawaiian shirts while doing it. Adam explains. Boogaloo is making a comeback, but not in the way you'd imagine. The Latin dance and music genre mixes mambo with cha-cha, doo-wop and soul. In the 1950s, there was the Boogaloo and his gallant crew. And Tom Jerio's 1965 hit, Boogaloo. And who could forget the godfather of funk, James Brown's take? Boogaloo was a massive cultural unifier back in its heyday. Now, in 2020, it's been co-opted to promote a race and cultural war. The term is being used by some far-right and anarchist groups who also have a thing for Hawaiian shirts. We'll get back to that later. They use memes and anonymous posts on Reddit, Facebook and 4chan to express anti-government, pro-violence and xenophobic sentiments. The 1984 breakdancing film Breaking 2 Electric Boogaloo turned Boogaloo into a meme. And experts suggest it caught on with a far-right nostalgia for what they call the white America of the 80s. One of the most popular Boogaloo-themed pages on Facebook is Thick Boogline. It has more than 32,000 followers. This meme on the page, for instance, compares the Boogaloo movement to American revolutionaries. It suggests violence was a path to freedom against the British Empire. Boogaloo supporter Aaron Swenson livestreamed himself on Facebook looking for a police officer to kill in Texarkana, Texas back in April. He was found to have liked a series of Boogaloo pages including Thick Boogline. A tech transparency project investigation found many far-right Facebook groups are able to exploit loopholes in the platform's anti-violence policies. It identified 125 groups using Boogaloo to suggest civil war is coming. Another derivation of Boogaloo is Big Luau. What is the Big Boogaloo? The Big Boogaloo? Get you some of this, Tricoms? What is the Big Igloo or the Big Boogaloo? A luau is the Hawaiian feast where pigs are roasted. This is an apparent reference to the group's hatred of the police, hence the Hawaiian shirts. Those shirts, along with combat gear and guns, have become a uniform, signaling the wearer is prepared for war. These videos posted on Twitter recently suggest Boogaloo supporters are infiltrating anti-police brutality protests in the US to jumpstart violence. But this group is not the one President Donald Trump is focused on right now. He's more concerned about left-wing groups, loosely described as Antifa or anti-fascist. Trump says he will designate Antifa as domestic terrorists. He blames them for agitation and violence at protests in US cities. While some protesters have been violent, so have the police. And this colorful group, hiding in plain sight, deserves condemnation too. Well, Facebook and Twitter are fighting a war over online influence, and at the heart of it is really fundamental. They're arguing over truth, what is true and what is false. Now, Twitter has started calling out the lies that some politicians like Donald Trump tell on its site. Facebook have not, and that has left some Facebook staff very upset.
We'll keep spinning around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Tuesday. People who use the dating app Grinder can filter by ethnicity. People online have complained about that feature for years, apparently. In light of the uprisings in the US over racial injustice, the app says they now have a zero tolerance for racism and hate speech, and that in the latest update, the ethnicity filter will be removed. Sony say they will delay uh, the announcement about PlayStation 5, which was set to be heard on the 4th of June. The company said in a tweet, they know that people are excited and anxious to see the new games, but they don't think now is the right time to celebrate and that they want to stand back and allow more important voices to be heard. The sixth mass extinction of life on Earth is accelerating, according to new research published in the journal, The Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. They found that there are 515 species who have populations of less than 1,000. They're likely to be lost from the Earth in the next few decades. They also warn of something called the domino effect, where the extinction of one species leads to the loss of another, which relied on that extinct species. It's clear to see where this ends up with humans. Well, history was made over the weekend when two astronauts made it to the International Space Station aboard a commercially made space vehicle, the Dragon Capsule. We spoke to Dr. Jaco Van Loon. The governmental space agencies like NASA and ESA, uh, and they have been working with private partners for a very long time to build uh, parts of rockets. And, but this is the first time that uh, one of these companies have launched people completely themselves. So building the rockets, being re responsible for the capsule for the launch, of course, very risky. And the fact that this has been such a success uh, opens the doors to more of this. And that means that um, space agencies can uh, contract uh, these companies uh, to deliver people into space. Space exploration, also because it's so expensive, it makes it almost inevitable that governments work together and do this together. And that, of course, can only be good because it creates uh, collaboration, cooperation and peace. And again, this is also the way that we need uh, to, to operate on Earth. The companies also are in this uh, for other reasons. Uh, they, they want, of course, to make a profit. And uh, one, one of the ways of making profit is, is tourism. Uh, so many of the, the private enterprises have been talking about uh, uh, sending tourists into space, uh, but eventually perhaps also exploiting of other uh, bodies in the solar system, uh, like the moon, Mars, and asteroids for mining, for instance. So in the long term, of course, there are some ethical questions that need to be addressed as well when you're dealing with uh, private enterprises uh, just you know, <laughs> taking control, basically. You easily um, talk about a trillion dollars if you wanted to go to Mars, for instance. So there's a huge uh, sum of money, and this is the reason why it hasn't happened yet. But although there is a lot of money uh, involved in in uh, running a space program, uh, all the technology that's been uh, developed 
uh, of course, in, in direct and indirect ways, uh, benefits, because it's just helping to drive um, our society becoming technologically uh, more advanced. And so uh, this can help um, in, in making ways more efficient, in, in perhaps tackling other, other problems on the Earth as well. Um, it draws in lots of people. It, it's, of course, it's, uh, it's a great inspiration for people to, to study engineering sciences or physical sciences. Um, so there are lots of indirect benefits that uh, really benefit society as a whole in many other different ways. All right, let's take a look now at some of the latest news that caught our eye about COVID-19. The United Nations warned the health systems in South American countries are going to be overwhelmed by the virus. Brazil, Peru, Chile and Mexico are seeing the highest rate of daily cases and the numbers are increasing by the hour in Argentina, Bolivia and Colombia. The Tiananmen Square vigil, which has been held in Hong Kong for decades, has been cancelled this year. People on the island come out to mark the thousands who were killed during the 1989 Tiananmen Square uprising against the Chinese Communist Party. The vigil has been cancelled ostensibly due to concerns over the spread of COVID-19. And fashion designers are not going to let a thing like a global pandemic stand in the way of them making money. So some of them have started designing things that look like this. And last up, some Cambridge University researchers have decided that the one thing the world needs right now is a robotic arm that can make an omelette. Yes, this video was posted to the school's YouTube account. As you can see, the robot arm goes from breaking the eggs to adding a little salt to whisking them up to frying and producing what looks like this. Mmm, delicious. Not. And that will do you from the Newsfeed team. Do reach out to us with any comments. You have questions, suggestions, you'll find me as always at Kamali Melbourne. If you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to subscribe. Thank you for being with us and see you again tomorrow.